a little back to the future as we map out the race and the stakes heading into Wednesday's final debate. This is what the map looked like on September 26th. That was the morning of the first presidential debate. Yes, we still had Hillary Clinton across the finish line, but Donald Trump was back in play because he was tied or leading in Nevada then. He was tied or leading in Florida. He was tied or leading in North Carolina, and he was tied or leading in Ohio. Plus, he was closing in Colorado. He was closing in Pennsylvania. You could say on the morning of that first debate, Donald Trump, the race was moving his way. He had a chance to take it away. But let's flip this out and come back to where we are now. Today, turn that off, sorry. Secretary Clinton leads there. Leads there. Leads narrowly there. Ohio, there's a debate. Some polls show Trump up, some polls show Clinton up. But look at the change in momentum now. She is well ahead of what she needs to win. Here's some of the dynamics at play here. Number one, Donald Trump is running in a very different electorate. Number two, early voting. Democrats look at this early voting. More than 1.25 million ballots cast already. 878,000 of them in critical battleground states. There are 37 states, plus the District of Columbia, that offer early voting. Democrats think this is a huge advantage for them. And then there's this. Donald Trump won in the Republican primaries, but they're 90 percent white. The general electorate will be more diverse. They're majority men in the Republican primaries. The general electorate will be majority women, and we know Trump at the moment has a problem with women. So in the past week, with all these Trump attacks, the President of the United States, other Democrats saying, Donald Trump is trying to get you Democrats to stay home. The President says don't fall for it. He's just going to drag this election as low as it can possibly go. And, and and he figures that if, if he makes our politics just toxic, then maybe you'll just figure out you got no good choices and you, you just get discouraged and you just don't vote. But don't fall for it. The president says don't fall for it, but even as we discuss Trump's troubles, um, there are questions among Democrats as to whether African-American communities, yeah. uh, that the enthusiasm for, A, enthusiasm for Clinton, are they enthusiastic for Clinton, and B, does this toxic environment just make either Democrats get overconfident when they see some polls showing Trump way up, or they just think, eh, I'm not, I can't do it? The theory has been, or the hope at least, has been for a, a long time that, that Trump himself is a kind of stand-in for what Obama was for the Democratic coalition. But instead of positive energy, it's negative energy that folks are coming out, not because they love Obama, but because they can't stand Trump. John, I was so struck this week watching the Obama-Obama ticket, a very formidable combination. Right. Um, Michelle and Barack Obama, these two upstart candidates. The problem is neither of them were actually on the ballot this year. Right. You wouldn't know it from watching the TV this week. I mean, they, they really took center stage. And where's right. Hillary Clinton? Raising money once right. again on the West Coast yeah. behind closed doors with wealthy donors. Uh, and by the way, Democrats are just fine with that. Yep. They're right. happy to have the Obamas right. out front and center. But it does speak to the, the nature of this election and who actually is the more compelling figures right. in public speaking. Plus, your, your colleague, I think Amy Chosick, yeah. wrote a very smart piece in the paper today. It, it's sort of obvious to some, but the yeah. way she lays it out, that it's hard. You would think the first female nominee for president of the United States would be out there with a bludgeon to Donald Trump at the time the issues are sexual harassment, sexual alleged sexual assault, obvious repetitive degrading of women, but she's been relatively quiet on this, and part of the calculation is if she talks about this, it turns the focus on her husband, right. Bill Clinton, and his past transgressions. Uh, so you mentioned not just the president out there trying to gin up early voting, which was critical to both of his wins, but the first lady, yeah. uh, Hillary Clinton, on Twitter, and then at one event praised this speech, pretty powerful, from Michelle Obama. This is in New Hampshire. And I feel it so personally. And I'm sure that many of you do too, particularly the women. The shameful comments about our bodies, the disrespect of our ambitions and intellect, the belief that you can do anything you want to a woman, it is cruel. It's, it's frightening. And the truth is, it hurts. It, it, it hurts. Uh, incredibly personal there from the First Lady, uh, and obviously they, she says this was about her personal feelings, uh, but she's also out at a political rally and there's no disputing. They get the math we were talking about earlier, especially among suburban women. Now, conservative women looked at that uh, speech by her and they turned it around and said, but Bill Clinton. I mean, that's just the way they're thinking right now. It, it's just such a partisan divide right now. If you're a conservative, you believe right. Donald Trump. If you're a liberal, you believe um, Michelle Obama and Hillary Clinton. But I asked some Republicans and independents, you know, Bill Clinton is on, on, on the ballot. Why do you guys keep talking about right. that? And they said, because they think that if, if she is elected, he will have such a position of power, at least as an advisor right. or someone behind the scenes, that they do consider him to be part of yeah, it. I think, I think there's some leftover issues. Issues, obviously, from the 90s right. here. Um, 
And but with good reason, conservatives look at that speech and they go, this is rich from the party of Ted Kennedy and Bill Clinton. Right. And there is merit to that. Right. Um, but whether or not you like the Obamas, they are clean on this issue. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's right. why the Clintons are not out talking about it. And the Obamas are. And I'm not sure that working out those issues from the 90s, even though I have like a little righteous, you know, uh, thrill when I hear about it, doesn't work with independent voters. And they're trying to right. bait Trump, by the way, into right. attacking exactly. them. Very, yeah. Into attacking right. a very popular first and lady. And by the way, it does show that Trump has at least some internal constraints, because what he hasn't done this past week is attack Michelle Obama. Absolutely. Right. And so something... Even though they told him not to. Yeah. There's like a matador uh, flying out there. Because clearly... They've programmed the Twitter account, even if he's yeah. just... You won't, can't do it, right? Type. You just won't allow it. But it's I think, the car, you can't start it. I think we should blow past the idea that, that one issue that I think Hillary Clinton is going to have over the next three weeks is going to be enthusiasm. And right. she, oh, the way Absolutely. that she can lose this election right. is if the not just the overall support doesn't match what Obama's coalition was, but if the turnout yeah. doesn't match. Right. And they are very worried about young people still. Uh, that number has not creeped up for her. And they are right. still worried that you will not see African-American turnout reach the levels it well, did with metrics, Obama. The right. metrics thus far have not shown this huge surge among Latinos or African-American right. voters in early voting that they want to see. Right.